Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, just a quick little video on what I've been up to with basing. Um, I know that I said that I was going to be working on light cavalry and I will get back to them once I get some one piece. However, as lockdown is easing in Scotland slightly, um, as in we are able to meet up with groups of people, it looks like, it looks like we're going to actually manage to get a game in the very, very near future. So, when I looked at my force, I actually realised that I have uh, a hodgepodge of stuff, uh, no guns, and a bit of a mess, really. Not really a coherent force whatsoever. So, in line with those um, fears of getting absolutely hauked off of Angus, I decided to work on some guns in preparation for a future game. So, what we're using for that is this little bad boy. Which is just a crappy applicator that you get on eBay, 50 nicker, and some just static grass that you pick up from the you just pick up from eBay. Just the normal thing, 15 quid, nothing fancy, pretty crap. I actually bought it and I thought this is going straight into the bin. However, it does produce results as you can see there. Pretty impressive for someone for 15 quid and a couple of quid of static grass. I'll get some better close-up pictures with the with the camera and not just my shaky hand syndrome here. So what we did what we needed to do to start was as I've spoken about before a few times, was we started with our plain MDF base, our MDF rings. Glued into position, obviously making sure you have enough space for said artillery piece. Pop them off, bring them down here, texture that up, school by error by me, I didn't add any pigment to the white here, I should have, I was in a bit of a rush uh, and just got a little bit excited and just banged it on pure, nothing wrong with that, however these will now need sprayed black because the MIG mud, which I use to go over the top, doesn't really work well on the white. Um, it needs a kind of dark undercoat to stick on better. So what you need to do this guys is your static grass applicator, ta -da! cheap baking tray, anything will do, a pound shoppy type junk will do, and your base that you want to text, um, you want to grass up. Now, I did actually do these with tufts myself. Uh, these are tufts that are made in the same process, just longer grass on baking, pow uh, baking powder, uh, baking paper, which you I just magnetise onto this thing, put little dots of glue on all over it, and then you get this. Effect. So that's just normal baking, greaseproof paper, baking paper, whatever you want to call it put little spots on and I just use little magnets there to hold it in place. So this is just really the same principle. So what we do now is we get our base, we get our glue and we bang it on. Every bit that you want grassed, put on. This is for the rocket battery that I seem to constantly be going on about. Let's hope they semi-perform on the blooming gaming table, although I have my doubts. Um, the static grass, yeah, that's easily picked up anywhere online. Loads of folks do it, but you do need to watch your length. The shorter it is, the more standy up it'll get. Um, if you can remember, if you're of the correct age and you can remember Mossman, from the He-Man figures range, he had a, a kind of very short static grass application all over his, his body, um, which is something... It can look good, but I don't think these guys fought on a golf course, put it that way. But the other thing is, when I did these bases, I actually at one point thought that a few tufts in the mud would have done, but it just looks naff. Um, having re-watched some Glastonbury stuff the other week there with it being on, well, being the weekend of it being on, and being there myself, the mud just becomes a slurry so it'd actually be more realistic to have no tufts and the whole thing just pure brown but it just doesn't look right it's one of those 
weird model things that when you try and do something like that, it just doesn't look right somehow. But a few tufts in the middle of a mud slurry at Glastonbury. I mean, if you guys have been or been to a festival like that, you ain't seen a tuft. Good grief, there's not a tuft to be seen anywhere. So you cover it all like that. Pop it down onto the tray. Get rid of that brush. Clip your little crocodile clip onto the baking tray, which gives it a charge. Okay, hit the little button here, and green light will come on, as you can see. And then just work it over the top. It'll start coming out. It looks like nothing's happening, and you start thinking, why did I buy this heap of sheer rubbish? But keep at it. Keep shaking, keep shaking, and it'll do its thing. I'd, I put a little mixture of grass into this. I, I just, I just, basically, I just had a whole pile of stuff lying around. Some of it's old Games Workshop grass, actually. I think it's burnt, burnt grass. I think they called it back in the day. Keep shaking it on, shaking it on. Could do an Ainsley Harriet thing here for anybody that knows that, but I'm not gonna. Shake, shake, shaky. It looks like that, pretty naff. But if I could carefully pick it up, hold it in the hole and hit this edge, which I've missed, which is kind of at the funny side of the camera. Keeping on shaking. You can see it, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see, but I can see it here. Do that. Give it a turn over. Decent tap. And there you have it. Now it looks still quite patchy, but obviously the PVA will dry clear. And when it does, it dries like that. So in this case, we've left the ruts for the for the cannon to sit, and obviously we've left the slots for the figs. Now I've done the figs in the exact same way. So we get one here. Here he is. Oh. So this is just one of my normal figs. Uh, I'll glue them up just the same. Oop. Plenty of glue on. And remember, it will dry clear. I mean, it's just PVA, just normal PVA. <laughs> Apart from, we normally say with any hobby thing, uh, anything but pound shop PVA seems to do the trick for me. Um, some of the better quality ones are a bit better, but I mean, pff, you're just gluing on static grass. So we charge him up with the crocodile clip too. And we hit him with the exact same way. You're n it's more difficult to get in, simply because there's a model in the way. So you have to hit it from funny angles. And it's also worth saying, um, make sure your figures are dry before you try this. Otherwise, moss man again. So we're hitting it up. Get it nice and close. Because the little gauze on there has a charge in it too. So it makes them shoot down and stay upright. So we'll unclip that. What, a wee bit left over from the side, from the crocodile clip held area. Give him a tap as well. And there we have it. A tufted up guy. So that when he slots into the base, like so. Whoop. And he sorts into the race like so. He matches. He goes in there. We can pop him out. It doesn't matter where he goes. It's all the same grass. He looks a little bit lighter, but he's got a tuft on his base. So now we can have any crew man in any slot on any base doing anything. And that is how I've been making these bases. And I don't think they look too bad, considering. You could do the whole thing under... Ooh, you buy enough static grass and the applicator for 30 quid, and I don't think you'd ever run out. Not if you continually catch it in the bacon tray, which acts as a good catch as well. So I have a think. Basin with a static grass applicator that, at first glance, looks absolute garbage. And you get these results. So there you go guys, 
thank you very much and have a good weekend. Ciao, Nana. Dad, you forgot to do the money thing.